Well, hello and welcome to the very first Llama Commerce Show. I'm Brett Curry. I'm the lead strategist here at Classy Llama. And I'm Kirk Theobald. I'm the chief strategist and CEO. You had to throw that in there, <laughs> didn't you? So we're really excited about this show and hopefully if the e-commerce community agrees, this will become a staple, an ongoing show. And we've, we feel like we've got a pretty good purpose for this show, Kurt. Yeah, absolutely. This wasn't just on a whim. We actually thought about this, planned this out. But why are we doing this show? So uh, what we have found over the years of being in the e-commerce industry is that uh, merchants in the e-commerce space uh, get overwhelmed by what's going on in, yeah. in e-commerce. There's so many options. There's yeah. so many service providers. There's so many applications and uh, solutions. And uh, so our objective is to demystify that for them. To demystify. I love that. So we're going to be kind of creating a roadmap over these shows because there are all kinds of resources. There are new tools that are coming out all the time. And it's nice to have somebody's perspective saying, hey, here's what we're seeing with our clients, with our friends in the industry. This is what we're seeing that's working. And so we're just going to lay out our thoughts. And hopefully this will be really helpful for you. And probably the most important thing about this show is to understand that this fellow right here is critical to understanding who's right. See, he has a broken arm, and this represents who's right. So right now it's in the middle because Brett and I are going to battle. Right now we're, we're on equal claw. footing. Yeah, yeah, aside from the fact that I'm chief strategist. Yeah, we're really, other, other than we're, that, we're almost so we'll, we'll on equal footing. We'll lean in a little bit this yeah. way. But yeah, I, you know, if, if I come up with a better idea than you have, then we'll slide right, the which trophy is, over. Right, which, is, which will be unusual, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's good. So we'll see. Yeah. So the topic for the day, I love our first topic. It is really critical. It's important. It's a hot topic. It is. Much debated, and I think our perspective may be a little bit different than what you I read agree. out there on the interwebs right now. I agree. Now. Yeah, and so we're going to say topic. one word, and you're going to be like, ding, 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 because it's such a buzzword, and that is responsive. Now, Every see, I would say mobile responsive, but Kurt <laughs> vehemently opposes that, that name, so it's just responsive. Yeah. Mainly, I think it's stupid to call it mobile responsive, but anyway, so, so let's just move that guy a little over this So way. The, the trophy is no longer in the middle. Dang it. So soon in the show, too. So what we want to share with you is uh, understanding when is it appropriate to go responsive, go responsive, yet another buzzword, how do you go responsive, and, and just talk around that to create some context that we think will tie responsive into a strategic approach to your e-commerce business rather than it just being something you do because everyone else is telling you to do it. Yeah. So, it's a source of anxiety, I think, for a lot mm -hmm. of marketing departments they don't and, get and left store behind. owners. They're like, I'm afraid I'm going to get left it's behind. It's like in so every meeting now. Yeah, what are we doing for the next year? Do we, think, do we go responsive mm -hmm. design? Do we create a separate mobile site? What do we do with mobile? And so we think we've got some, some answers there. With so, mobile, I love that. With mobile, I'm yeah. this over more. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> so anyway, um, one of the key things to understand is that the more we get into the responsive design being a standard thing, the lower the costs are going to be to go responsive. So bear that in mind. And please understand that responsive is not like an on-off switch. You're not either fully responsive or not responsive at all. It's actually that you can, you can scale into it, and there are ways, there's ways to get there to where you accomplish the business objectives associated with going responsive, which is uh, providing a better user experience across more device types and, and different resolutions. Um, there's, there's, uh, there are ways to scale into that to where you absorb the costs over time rather than trying to absorb all the costs up front, because right now, actually going fully responsive can be very expensive, depending on what technologies you have implemented right now. So I think the first question that, that most people are asking and that we need to answer is, do you go responsive now or do you go mobile now? Because it doesn't have to be responsive design. Fair enough. But do you go mobile <laughs> now or do we wait? And right. that, because there, that is a big cash outlay for a lot of people. So do we go now, do we wait? What say you, Kurt? Yeah, so I think that right now just having something that adapts to mobile is generally very important right now because that's mm -hmm. that's a ship that started to sail probably you know three or four years ago where it really started to gain traction a lot of people started getting getting on mobile uh, however I always think you need to pivot from your data pivot from your unique circumstance not from the general recommendations in the industry. So look at your analytics, look at where people are coming from and what your mobile adoption rate is. What we have seen from, from our clients is that they have been at least doubling in their, their mobile usage. Even those with, with older demographics, uh, with previously um, like B2B typically didn't have as high of, of uh, mobile adoption rate. Well, that's getting high mobile adoption right now as well. So there's a clear major traction in place right now with what is considered yeah. mobile. Yeah. Richard, you may think if you're a B2B company, and we would even say this, if you're B2B, 
then you may not need to be as urgent in mm -hmm. your quest to go responsive or to go mobile. Or if you're targeting an older demo, you might not be as urgent. But we have a, a client whose average buyer is 59, and I think that's actually a little young. I think, mm -hmm. I think they're a little bit off in that. Mm -hmm. uh, but their mobile traffic is still doubling. Yeah. But what's also interesting, we're looking at an article, actually just earlier today we were looking at it. Uh, Google did a study on mobile shoppers and what they're doing on their devices. So it was like a thousand people they, they surveyed or whatever. And of those that began looking on their mobile phone, so they began the process of searching for whatever product they wanted on their mobile phone, only 17% actually purchased from the mobile phone. Mm -hmm. Like 45% ended up purchasing from their desktop or laptop. Only 17% from the mobile device itself. So, so are we talking mobile phones or mobile devices? Which one? Mobile was it? phone. It was mobile just phone. mobile phone, which makes sense. Tablets because, were separated. Okay, so here's the thing. It's very important that that you understand if you don't know this already. Mobile phones and smaller resolution devices are typically research tools, which is what that research was showing. Uh, only 17% actually ended up purchasing, whereas I think it was something like 84% that actually used a, a, yes. a mobile phone. Yes. Um, whereas if you see like a, a, a tablet device, like an iPad especially, um, those are more of a purchasing device. So you're going to see higher conversion rates that are more consistent with your site. If you notice that your mobile conversion rates are lower, if you're looking at your analytics and you see that mobile uh, conversion rates are lower, that's normal. Um, then you want to look at and see what does your tablet look like versus versus your uh, your mobile phone, uh, lower res or uh, smaller devices. Um, your your tablet should be close to, if not on par with your with your uh, desktop devices. So that's kind of how it plays out. Don't be alarmed if your mobile uh, conversion rate is lower than than your site average. It could be an indication that you need to rethink that mobile experience. Sure. But it's also just the nature of the mobile device as of right now. Now, if you have a store, a physical store, where you're selling goods out of that store and, you're, and you have an e-commerce store, uh, we have found that the mobile user who's wanting to buy something locally, they're usually taking action from their phone, but it's often a, a phone call or pulling up a map mm -hmm. or something like that. Mm -hmm. So we do have to think about what is the, the user actually doing with their mobile device, with their phone. And in a lot of cases, if they're going to buy online, they're just researching on their phone, they're going to buy with mm -hmm. the tablet or the, or the desktop, at least right now, that could change. Mm -hmm. And if they're looking to buy in the store, then they may be en route and using their phone to do the click to call or, or pull up a map or, or whatever. So you've got to think about all those things. So, so Brett, my, my question is, and I think that's something that's really important for our audience to understand is just that question of uh, when, how do you time it? What's the right timing and, and how should you, you know, strategically make that decision? Another key question that you've got to ask is, are there other low hanging fruit areas of opportunity that we should be doing now? before we go mobile, mm -hmm. because it is expensive, it will take some time, if you have a lot of SKUs, if you have a big store. So is there something else we need to be doing right now? Uh, we still talk to e-commerce store owners that are not using AdWords, which it's not always a great play, but a lot of times it is. Mm -hmm. they, they're not using some kind of social strategy, which again, it's not always perfect, but a lot of times it is. They're not tapping into their email database. We run into people that have you know, tens of thousands of people on an email database and they're not using that. Mm -hmm. So if it's a matter of limited resources, you may need to do some other things first before you go mobile, especially if you're, if you're still seeing the mobile trend through Google Analytics is not just taking off. Right, and, and consider, what I'd add to that is consider the cost, because sometimes going responsive isn't expensive. Uh, sometimes it's relatively accessible for you. Um, it depends on what technology you have and especially how complex or customized that solution is. The more complex it is, the more third-party applications and extensions you're integrated with, the uh, typically the more expensive it will cost to go responsive because now you have to have all of that agree with the responsive UI. So um, so consider how, co how costly is it going to be and how accessible is it? Mash that up against data around how much mobile traffic do we, do we actually get and, um, and, and then that'll give you an idea of what kind of, and, and, well, third, third thing which you mentioned was, um, was what else do we have as low hanging fruit? Where yeah. else should be, we be investing? Because we really en uh, embrace the idea that you only take one or two good shots at a time, uh, new things that you're doing. Yeah. So if there's other low hanging fruit that's like no brainer, you know, ROI, you need to be investing in those directions and taking those good shots first. And the, and the good news is, the longer we get into responsive territory, the cheaper it's going to get. Cheaper, so, the easier, the faster it's going to be to deploy. Right. The, Obviously, the downside is you're getting behind the curve, which is what everyone's freaking out about right now. But uh, I would be more freaking out about things you should have done five years ago that you're not doing now, rather than something that maybe you should start doing in the near term. That uh, you know, freak out more about the thing that's five years old that you should have done that that you know that long ago, rather than what's current. Great point. 
great point. So Thank the you. other big question, dang it, I was getting ready to grab that when you weren't looking. Just to slide up because I feel like I'm doing a better job so far. Oh, I see. <laughs> yeah, no, just kidding. The other question I think we have to answer and that people are asking is, do we go responsive? So responsive design, mm -hmm. or do we create a mobile version? So a mm -hmm. separate mobile version, responsive or mobile version, what do you think? Well, I think that is a lot, it's certainly across all platforms a lot easier to build out a new uh, theme or a new design for uh, a mobile version of your site. Um, no matter how complex your site is, it's generally going to be easier. So to creating do that, that separate mobile version is going to be yeah, easier. Yeah, because if than it's, like, when you create that, you create two different pieces of technology. One is your mobile version CSS spreadsheet, mm -hmm. whatever you want to call it, and the other is your desktop. And they're two very separate things. Whereas responsive is like this one piece that has to evolve and flex and respond. Yeah. It's a total redesign for most people in, in right. most cases. From a technology perspective, right. it's a total redesign. Right. 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 So I think that that's more accessible. And then there's also adaptive. So it, there's actually, again, this is part of scaling into it. You've got, uh, you've got just a mobile theme, and then you've got adaptive, and then you've got full responsive. Um, and, and again, responsive is even on a sliding scale. You can have certain parts of your site that are responsive and other parts that aren't. So you can scale into the cost. But adaptive is where you have like... Um, you have like five supported resolutions. So, you know, it's your, your, your small mobile phone, you know, somewhere between like, a, like an iPad mini kind of tablet, then your full tablet, then, you know, then a, 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 Air, Ma iPad, or a MacBook Air kind of 13 inch type thing, and then your full desktop and then large resolution. I don't know, you know, you just tear it out. So what happens is it's gonna measure and it's gonna match to as close to your resolution, whatever the user is using, um, as close as possible to that. And it'll give a reasonably good experience for just about any resolution, but it's not going to perfectly adapt to the screen and fill it yeah. exactly like you want. So I think a good rule of thumb is if you're going to redesign anyway, if you're at a point where you're going to replatform or redesign, think responsive, mm -hmm. most likely. And here's why. Because Google actually said they prefer responsive, and Google's fairly important in the online space, I would say, as a marketing person. They're fairly important to consider. Google likes responsive better, and we'll post a link to a blog you guys can check out. They like responsive better because it's one site. It's one site for them to index, one site for them to pay attention to. It's also one site for you to optimize and one site for you to manage. So that is helpful. But if you're if you don't want to redesign or replatform, if you like your store the way it is, then creating that separate mobile site is way better, easier. So I agree with you insofar as you're saying that strategically, like you're gonna. You agreed with me, so I'm gonna move this over. <laughs> Fine, I'm gonna take it right back here in a moment. Um, strategically. You, um, you're going to gain efficiencies in a redesign, going responsive. It's a great time to evaluate right. what you want to do in terms of your uh, user experience mm -hmm. from, a, from a resolution and, yeah. and, and device type perspective. You need to evaluate that in a redesign. Mm -hmm. um, however, uh, there are times, even if you're doing a redesign, again, depending on how complex it is, it just might not be the right timing for you, and you need to evaluate it against all the other pieces. So insofar as you're saying you need to evaluate it at that point, I agree with you because it's a great opportunity to gain efficiencies, but it has to be mashed up. So I wouldn't go so far as to say you probably need to go responsive if you're doing a redesign. Right. I would say, thank you. I would say, thank you. see, you're not in your head. I know you're agreeing I'm with stop, me. I'm going to stop all You just evaluate. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you just evaluate it at that point. Yeah, well, another thing you have to think about is what is the user intent? So if, if what I'm doing, if I'm searching your site and I'm on my desktop, if that's very different than what I would be doing if I was on your site on my phone, mm -hmm. then it may be better to have a mobile version. Because the mobile version, you are totally reworking that for the mobile device. Right. Whereas if it's a responsive design, it's the same site and it's got to flex and adapt to whatever device. Mm -hmm. So if the mobile experience, what someone wants to do on their phone is very, very different than what they do on a desktop, then maybe the separate mobile version is the way to go. Although typically, just so you know, if responsive is done right, you pivot from the smallest device and then you expand out. So you decide what is the most important content to, to display, and then you expand out from that to larger devices. Um, so you should actually have a very tailored experience for that small device, yeah. and then see that expand out. Um, but I don't want to downplay what you're saying, which probably you should have oh, this here, you. in that, the, that Google and other search engines will continually add more weight to the value of responsive as you get further down the road. That's my assumption, I think it's a pretty safe one. Um, but that's they, what we tipped their hand at that. They've already you know, done. They've already tipped it and I said think, this is I important. To that. It's only going to gain more weight in the in the rankings um, as we move forward. So, so to go responsive, I think that mystery is solved. I think we have adequately covered every facet of going mobile. Every single facet. No question left unanswered. Maybe that's a bit of a stretch. So one final thing though, anything really critical that you want to think about in terms of 
what like when you're thinking about a user experience on the mobile mm -hmm. on, on the mobile or uh, or responsive side of things as I like to call it yes um, any critical features that you need to consider for that user experience on the on the on the mobile side of things. Yeah, so there are a couple of things. Uh, you know, if people are researching on their mobile device, which they are, then they need an easy way to be able to view pictures. So thinking about the way your pictures are, are handled on that mobile version is really critical. Mm -hmm. And being able to see multiple versions of that picture. I uh, like to buy shoes, personally. I like Zappos. Zappos does a great job. Test it on your phone. Test it on, a, I've got a, a Nexus 7 tablet, so I, I test it on there as well. The ability to scroll through the different images on that app is very powerful. So you gotta think about the way your mobile app deals with images. Also, simple stuff like click to call. You know, if if you have the local store or if your product, a lot of people like to call and ask questions, click to call is easy, but you gotta think about it. Mm -hmm. And then social integration as well. Mm -hmm. A lot of our social activity now is done with the mobile phone. So if I just bought a new pair of shoes and I want to show that off to my friends, which I typically don't do personally, but a lot of people do, right. having that social integration is also key. So a couple of things that I, I'm thinking in that regard. First, you have to consider your infrastructure. So I mean, the things that you're talking about are really great, but you know, click to call. Do you want people calling? Do you really have an you infrastructure may not want to support to. that? Maybe you just do a social yeah. thing or something along those lines. Mm -hmm. In regards to pictures, I think that um, if it's a more B2B, like a higher tech type purchase, They'll be doing research, but pictures don't matter as much to them. We've done a lot of B2B, uh, mm -hmm. built out a lot of B2B They need the specs there. The they specifications need the, they need the is what they want to see. Right. Pictures right. are a lot of times still important because it just creates that warmth and that connection to the product. Mm -hmm. But if it's a nut or a screw or a bolt, you know, it's like, who cares? <laughs> you know, I mean, <laughs> do they, they, they barely need to have a picture there, but the, the specifications, they need a specific width, uh, diameter, uh, length, uh, whatever. Uh, yeah, yeah, thank you. <laughs> uh, final words, Brett, on, on responsive and the strategic approach to that for a merchant. Yeah. You have to address this, in my opinion, within the next six to 12 months, at least decide what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. You have to do that. Have a game plan. Have a game plan. Yeah. You don't have to go mobile within the next six to 12 months, but it's probably gonna be pretty soon. But mm -hmm. get your game plan now, but identify those other areas of low-hanging fruit that you may need to tackle first. My final word is don't assume anything the timing for your business will be different for the timing from others, so don't let peer pressure persuade you. And when you do start making changes, please apply the best practice of testing the changes that you're doing and have it data-driven at all points so that you're looking at the data and seeing are the changes I'm making causing lift in my business. That's awesome. my final word. So one thing we want to do with these shows, we want to keep them short and punchy and really valuable so they don't take up all your time. We also want to make them very relevant. So we would love to know what your burning questions are for e-commerce. So what have you been asking? What are you, you know, around your, your board, what are you guys trying to figure out, what you want to do in the coming year? Let us know that. We'd like to answer that and address that. We're also going to bring on some guests in coming shows, which will be really fun. So this was a good time, Kurt. Absolutely. Uh, email us at llamacommerce at classylama.com. You can post questions on our Google Plus page, and we'll continue to expand the different ways that you can connect with us as we move forward from here. And uh, the last thing I'd like to say is I just noticed that the statue is a little bit on my side, and so I win this round. Okay, Feels one, good one to round to you, round. but you. we shall meet again. There'll be another round. <laughs> Fair enough. Right. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks, Appreciate guys. We'll see, we'll see you soon.